Hey everyone, my name is John, also known as The Shades. We have a new series coming to one of our producer's channels, something of a revival to what we've done before. But for those who are new here, a brief history. Back in 2016, we had discovered a TTRPG engine that had caught our interest, and we wanted to try it out and make a streaming series for it. For those rare few who don't know what a TTRPG is, it stands for Tabletop Role Playing Game. It's a game where a group of people actually gather at a table and create their own story, often with a game master guiding things along, with players able to act out their role in any way they wish, limited only to the stats of their characters. I'm sure most of you here are familiar with the more famous incarnation, Dungeons & Dragons, but given that we know next to nothing about TTRPGs, we needed a DM to help us run the game. Well, it turns out a fan from back in our old website days was a tabletop expert and was more than willing to work with us on this and has since become a key member of the RVT family. Enter Mildred the Monk, who reviews TTRPG systems and nowadays interviews the creators of said systems. When he was told about the project, he was more than happy to jump on board. Thus began what would later be called RV Tabletop. And given our fan base, it only made sense that our first campaign would be Toku-themed with our first campaign, Ryder the Transformation. Of course, given the system was still in development, we had to house rule the hell out of the game, but it was a lot of fun, including silly moments, like when Mike Shell tried to use a tower shield with a turret like he was Captain America, repeatedly, serious moments, and some epic moments of badass. Like when I finished the final boss with the largest damage roll the monk had ever encountered. This is going to be a damage record, not just for this campaign, <laughs> not just for your character shades, but for my entire tabletopping career, going all the way back to when I first started rolling dice in 1996. Be proud, sir. Oh, I am. <laughs> Even in the days of, make, of the times when I flirted with mega damage in the Rifts days, I did not get this kind of number. Damn! 100,960. Damage? So he's yes. Damage. <laughs> you just broke six figures of damage. <laughs> From there, Monk was ready to take us in new directions with his own massive collection of TTRPG systems, which brings us into our second campaign, Journey through the Ninth World using Numenera. Its post-post-post-apocalyptic world gave us a chance to play outside our comfort zone and led to one of our most interesting characters, with Mike Shell playing the flirtatious Varric, leading to not only one of the most lasting catchphrases, keep it in your pants, Varric, but also one of the most iconic scenes, when he decided to flirt with my character's mentor, the Red Mother, and getting more than he bargained for. And let us not forget when a parasite ended up playing Rule 63 on him in the end. From there, in between games, we would try a handful of one-shots, dubbed Monk Minis, where we tried out games like 13th Age, Anima, Beyond Fantasy, Cthulhu Tech, with even more Mike Shell shenanigans, and much more. Always fun to try out new systems and see how they compare to one another. But the real fun began with our third campaign, The Enemy Within, using the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay System 3rd Edition, which also gave me the moniker, Lord Fussy Butt. For me personally, I started to peter out during the next campaign, Doomsday Dawn, using the playtest version of Pathfinder 2nd Edition, where we also added new friend Vixen Shelby to the mix briefly. Then with the last campaign, Zeitgeist, the series was moved over to Monk's channel and renamed Monastery at the Table. But with time, the show ended up taking a break, which we'll explain why in a bit, but now the show is coming back under a new title. Cloister of the Dice. Now, for further explanation on why the hiatus and what we have planned for the future, let me hand it over to the monk himself to hear it straight from the horse's mouth. Monk, take it away. In April of 2020, I bowed out on what was supposed to be a temporary hiatus while I gave myself a break. That break ended up being me wandering the desert for three years, meaning I spent less time than Moses. But all things change, and my not-so-little sabbatical has come to an end. People keep asking if I'm back. And I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. So what took me so long? Well, the muse is fickle. It's true that after going full speed for four years straight, I needed a break. But moreover, I learned the hard way that I cannot be both producer and game master simultaneously, especially with the ambition I try to bring to every session. This is where Lady K comes in, who had asked while in the middle of another project if I'd ever GM again. After explaining the situation, she offered to act as producer, and at that moment, I started brainstorming. Inspiration, you see, is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. 
That said, I'll be using Roll20 as our virtual tabletop, or VTT, platform of choice. I know that years ago I said I would not use Roll20 again, but it comes down to that platform offering the best through line of the things I would need. Specifically, a flexible support structure, the ability to use dice and cards as appropriate, the ability to use multiple systems as well as homebrew material, and the ability to integrate a musical score. Obviously, this meant that one system designed VTTs, such as Shard Tabletop, which is exclusively using D&D 5th Edition, were out of the question. But what about the others? Well, what about Roll? Roll's got some interesting exclusives, but its storage limit and emphasis on cameras wouldn't be compatible with us. What about Foundry? Which is very tempting, but its emphasis on using a cloud service or local hosting through port forwarding, as well as the lack of a drag-and-drop system, made it less than ideal. However, I will credit Foundry's developers for refunding me so quickly when I was considering it. What about Mythic Table? That's a pretty good one, and you've talked about them in the past, right? Yes, I have. Mythic Table is an open-source VTT who I've interviewed as developer during its crowdfund campaign. But it doesn't have card support at this time, so that was a deal-breaker. Okay, what about Owlbear Rodeo? That's a no-frill successor to the old Astral system that went belly up after a while. Owlbear Rodeo is nice, but it's clearly biased towards fantasy games. And once again, no card support. Of course, last but not least, there's Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Grounds looks pretty good, doesn't it? Oh sure, it's a powerful setup. It also costs $150 for a GM license and $40 for a player license. There is no force on heaven, hell, or anything in between that will get me to shell out that much or get other people to shell out that much. Thus, Roll20 it is. Now to its credit, it's made significant leaps and bounds since I last visited the site, so I am somewhat optimistic. That said, there's a few ground rules to establish. I will not run the core version of the world's most litigious role-playing game. My crusade is still to showcase what else is out there. That said, D&D adjacent things like the previously covered Heavens and Heresies, Frostmark, Anime 5e, Esper Genesis, Everyday Heroes, and the upcoming at the time of this recording Tales of the Valiant are on the table. Also, if Tales of the Valiant is compatible with my goals, which it's looking more and more likely, I may consider using that as a template for several third-party campaign setting usage in the future. Other large TTRPGs such as Savage Worlds, the Tristat system, Cortex Prime, Gumshoe, the One Roll Engine, and Powered by the Apocalypse are not necessarily high priority, but they are open to consideration. While the logistics are still being worked out, I would like to bring people I've collaborated with in the past to act as guest GMs using their games. Down the road, I am strongly considering using Tabletop Simulator for certain projects, one of which, under consideration, is the mecha board game Embryo Machine, as well as Millennium Blades, a simulated meta card game experience. Independent and fan-made projects are likely to take priority, as are the ones overlooked by most actual plays. And when possible, we'll be using the Fatum deck that I've used on a previous episode of Geek Watch to determine character personas. This will likely be done only when we do session zeros, and only if it's actually warranted. Of course, in between the stories, I do want to host panel discussions with myself and my players, and possibly do so with the designers involved with the various games we're covering, if we can manage it. That being said, where do we start? There's a lot of potential games in my library, both old and new, that could fit the bill. However, in the end, I'm choosing Emberwind as our inaugural TTRPG. What is Emberwind, you may ask? Well, it is a science fantasy TTRPG designed by Nomnivore Games and created by Derek Chung. Emberwind has a particular style of fantasy that it wishes to present, one that's analogous to books like Malazan, Book of the Fallen, as well as video game RPGs like Skies of Arcadia and Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together. This is a very player-facing and approachable TTRPG, with an emphasis on modularity since there's multiple ways to engage its character creation systems, as well as interactions within the world. It's meant to have something for all tabletop RPG skill levels, from the rookie to the grizzled old vets. We'll be going through a set of modules for this campaign. Skies of Axia, Sunlight and Sky, Wailing Song, and the Song Reef Tapestry. Because some of these modules run parallel to each other, the plan is midway through to set up a different set of characters. But that's still being worked on. That's the gist on my part. Back to you, John. 
thanks for that, Monk. So here's what we have planned for the Cloister. Unlike other tabletop streams, we intend to be the most transparent tabletop stream we can make. From explaining the rules, including any house rules we decided to add, sharing character sheets, and any additional homebrew stuff we decided to add in. So, let's beat the cast of our Emberwind campaign. Of course, Monk will be our DM, and I am one of the players. But also, Lady K and Maddie J are joining as well. Hell, Slick Rick is even joining in. Then we have a couple of Monk's friends joining, with Nefinor Frawl and Donna Elise also jumping in as well. With the six of us, it should be one crazy adventuring party. So get ready for the Cloister of the Dice starting September 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on Mildred's Kick Channel. Date and time subject to change, of course with new episodes airing every Saturday at the same time. Our first stream will be our first bit of transparency with a stream of Session Zero, where we'll be creating our characters beyond some pre-show stuff we've already established and getting a feel for who they are, as well as introducing them into the world. Don't miss out on this new stream series, as it's time to roll the dice and see what adventure awaits us on the table. On the shades, and we'll see you at the Cloister. Rock and roll on!